Hello everyone, this is Kendra Coleman and welcome back to this last video in this series where we're looking at the vSphere web client. This video we're going to be looking at a lot of the new features that are in vSphere 5.1. We're not going to look at all of them because there's like 200 plus different features that have been enhanced in it or new things that have been added, but we'll be looking at some of them. And the first thing we're going to look at, if you haven't looked through all my videos, is this new vSphere web client. I'm not going to go through and teach you how to do anything in here because that's what all of my other videos so far have been. It's been teaching you how to do things through the web client, how to add hosts, how to add a distributed switch, how to add port groups. Basically, how to stand up your environment from start to beginning, everything through the vSphere web client without ever touching the C-sharp client because this is really... VMware's wave of the future, this is where everything's going to start pushing, so this is where they want you to really start looking. So have a feel to be able to look around, be able to look and see the old inventory tree view is kind of what we've been used to seeing, or being able to go back and seeing inventory list view of everything in here so we can see all the data stores across multiple virtual data centers versus just seeing it at a tree view. So it's one thing that you need to just come through here and start getting yourself used to it and start looking around. You know, a lot of this is kind of what we maybe been used to seeing in the in the old C sharp client, but there are some new enhancements to every single little thing. So one of the things that we, I'd like to show you within the vSphere web client, or what it's kind of cool to do. So we'll say let's we'll go ahead. We want to start creating a new VM. So we'll go here. We'll go to our management cluster. We'll say I want to go ahead and I'll create a new virtual machine. But then I get called away for lunch or the boss calls me or something like that and I don't have time because I've gotten all the way down to select the storage but I don't have time to finish it so I'll just go ahead and click right to over here and what it does is it actually saves a work in progress of everything you've been working on so if you were adding a new port group or adding a new data store cluster it doesn't really matter what you're doing you can actually start saving all these works in progresses over to this right hand side and at the same time you can also click on it and remove the work in progress if you don't need to do it anymore. Another thing to look at is within our clusters view we can actually see some enhanced things within DRS and HA. So let's go ahead and I'll go to my cluster that's been created here for my vCloud instance and if I go we'll go ahead and look at the VR, DRS instance right here. We already, we've always had the recommendations to see what's going to happen. We've always seen the faults. We've always seen the history about what's taken place for vMotion but the new CPU memory utilization graphs really give you a, a nice depiction of what actually everything looks like in here. So it's actually a, an easy way to start looking at a lot of these different things. So if you, it's really a bad, bad showing right now because I can't, I only have one VM running in the cluster, so it really doesn't show you much. But if I go to vSphere HA, you can see that I can see the summary of it. It has a lot of different variables in here to, that gets a, a lot deeper than what you would see. Normally within the C-sharp client, you can also see the heartbeat of what data stores are being used for the data store heartbeating. So instead of having to dig around beforehand, this is an easy way to see it. And you can also see if you have any configuration issues, you can see uh, what's been selected as a master or a slave. Um, as you see this little little bug right here, having that. Uh, oh, it's because the SSH host is actually defined. But So this is actually saying that what's been chosen as a master versus a slave within inside the cluster as well. Now if I go to the Manage tab, I can see that within DRS I have a new feature and it's called Scheduling DRS. So I can actually schedule DRS to go and turn off at certain times. So if I go to the Scheduling Options and I click this Change button, I can see that I actually set up DRS to run, turn off, everything like that at certain times or intervals. And this is good for when you need to think about do I need to schedule backups or patches or upgrades or anything like that that might affect a cluster operation. So that's a really cool feature that's been added. Next we'll look at the licensing features and really it's not really a feature, it's just a new way to look at it. So within the licensing portal, if we go to the administration side, we look at licenses. From here, we would actually enter our license keys through here. Just go ahead and click add. Then you would go to your instances of your host and you would choose it right here and then you would click this button to actually assign a license to our host. Now that's kind of usual but now we have this new license reporting feature which you can actually use so I know we're moving away from VRAM right because you can see right here it says VRAM but it's going to a, a new cloud suite licensing model but this is where you can see at the bottom you can see what a, a report looks like for all the licensing that you have within your vCenter view. 
And I also want to take a look at right here back in the home page, you have this thing called Log Browser. Now this is actually pretty cool because what we can do is we can actually have a single UI for browsing all the logs of all our host and our vCenter server. So if we go ahead and we select this object right here, we'll say we'll go ahead and select host02 and we'll click OK and as you can see the, the logs have not been retrieved. I can go ahead and I can click retrieve now and it'll bring all the logs in, but I've already done that for host03. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and what it does is you can actually see all the logs for, this is the syslog log view right here. If I want to look at the VM kernel log, all I have to do is just click down here and I can view that. And also can uh, filter it if there's any errors or anything like that, right? So I can actually um, get down into a specific um, subset, right? So it's an easy way to filter through there. You can also do uh, conditional filtering to get a little bit more advanced as well. So not only do you have that for your host, but you can also have it for your vCenter object as well. So if you need to look at the VPXD log, this is where you can do it without actually having to go and either drill through your Windows host or now drill through the vCenter virtual appliance host. This is an easy way to see it in a singleized view. The last thing we're going to talk about with inside the vSphere client is this new concept of tags. So within here, I've created a few different categories and a few different tags, and I'll kind of show you exactly why or you know what really really makes this up. So if I go to vCenter, and it really the concept of tags is they can go for anything, right? So if I go to a virtual machine and I say, this is my DSL machine, I'm going to go here to my manage tab and I'm going to go to the tags and I'm going to say, I'm going to assign a tag to it. I'm going to say that this is a 2008 R2 server. I know it's not, but I'm just saying it is. And I'm also going to assign a tag that says this is an a D server and maybe I want to assign a new tag right so we'll say that this is for uh, we'll say it's development right and I need to pick a new category so I'm gonna go choose a new category and I'm gonna say the category name is development team because I want the development team to have access to everything that has been tagged with development and so as you can see right here, this is just for a virtual machine, but I can, I can actually tag it for everything. So if I want to be able to add it at any level, like I said, anything within here can have a tag. So you have to use it and you have to think about me as an administrator, how I'm going to um, be able to you know, sort and filter all these different things out, right? So if I go ahead and I click that, I can see that now I've added this as development team. This is an AD 2008 R2. So what if I said I need to see all the AD servers within my environment? Well, I could go ahead and click on this AD right here, and I would get a list or a view of all the AD servers within my environment. What if I said, well, I want to just see all the 2008 R2 servers within my environment. I'll go ahead and I'll click this, right? So I can actually see everything that's been tagged with that certain thing. But what about at a cluster view or at a host view? What if I said that this virtual or this, uh, this host right here needs to be set with a certain tag and I'm going to make this, I'm going to assign a tag to it because I already created a few. And I'm going to say that this is a Cisco B200, right? So I can say that this is a B200 Cisco server. And I can say that this is also a development um, thing. So I want to make sure that the development team actually has access to this. So now that the development team has access to this, they can access anything within the host or anything within the cluster. So the development team, everything they have access to is going to be listed in here. So they can see the host, they can see clusters, they can see anything that you would do. Like I said, you can do this with data center level objects, basically anything within here, VF, CF templates, data stores, resource pools, everything can have a tag. So you need to have an idea of how you're going to want to sort and filter out and be able to look through everything through here. You can create your own categories. You can think of anything you would want. You assign entities to it, and that's what it can be able to do. Now, one of the other cool features within vSphere 5.1 is you have this idea of enhanced vMotion. So let's go ahead, and I will go to my host and clusters view, and I will look at this DSL machine right here. So if I go to the summary tab, I can see that it is running on host 01, in that it is the hard drive is actually running on host one local. Now, the one thing that was new within here is that I can actually migrate this and I can vMotion between hosts on localized data stores. So before within the C Sharp client, we've always had this option there, but it's never been able to be chosen unless the virtual machine was powered off. But now we can actually do it with a virtual machine powered on. 
So let's go ahead and click this. If I go back over here to my DSL console screen that's actually up, I can see that I can move, I can click around. But if I go back over here and I start kicking off the vMotion, let's see, we said it was on host 01. So let's go ahead, choose a new cluster. Don't worry about the um, cap or the compatibility thing right here. It's, it's because it's not up to hardware level version 9. And let's go ahead and we'll move it to host 3. Yeah, because it's on 1. So we'll move it to host 3 and we will move it to the host 3 local drive. We'll go ahead and click next, click next, click finish. As you can see on the top right side, it's actually starting to relocate the virtual machine. We go over here, go ahead, we'll start, we can move around, we can click, we can do whatever. And we go back to the web client, it's still moving it. I can go back over, still keep moving around, clicking, everything like that. And as you can see, it's already moved over. So this is actually a very small VM, as you can see up here. It's got very, very, very low utilization and very, very low stuff like that. So the actual V motion of it doesn't take very long. But that's one thing that you can do within vSphere 5.1. Next is a lot of enhance within the distributed virtual switch. So if I go down here to my distributed switch and I look at my DB switch, one of the new things that, that have been coming in here is that you have this idea of health checking, right? So right here down in the health check portion, we can see that I've already gone ahead and enabled it, but it's, by, it's disabled by default and you have these VLAN and MTU settings. So the network health check support helps me detect misconfigurations across physical and virtual switches. So if I have mismatched VLAN trunks or anything like that, or if I have mismatched MTU settings between virtual NICs, physical switches, virtual switches, physical adapters, physical switch ports, or I have mismatched uh, teaming configurations on a distributed virtual switch up into the physical switches, um, this is what's going to enable me to be able to see that. So now it's starting to probe back into the physical switches of what I'm able to see. Now another cool thing is that, you know, let's we'll say before if you ever had a problem with your distributed virtual switch or your vCenter instance, uh, what would you have to do? You'd probably have to go into the DCUI, restore back to a, a virtual standard switch, and then rebuild your distributed switch and then start migrating everything over, or you'd have to bring everything back up because you lost vCenter. So this is actually a way if you actually have a problem within uh, your vCenter or anything like that, you can actually now restore to distributed virtual switch. So I've already SSH'd into host02 over here, and I can actually look into it. So let's go ahead and I will look at this right here. So this is the DCUI, which we're all kind of used to seeing, but this is an SSH version of it. And if I go to the network restore options, we now actually have this option to restore to a virtual distributed switch. So this wasn't there before, but it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Now, if you didn't need to restore to a dist distributed switch, or let's say you have, you want to do this multiple times, or you have a specific thing you've been testing. Well, within distributed switch, I can actually right click on this, go to my all vCenter actions, and I can actually export the configuration of my distributed switch in all my port groups. So I can say this is my VCD switch, right? Go ahead and click OK. We'll just want to save the exported file. We will save this as the VCD backup. Didn't really matter what I call it. Click save, and now it's saved. Now, if I go to a new uh, vCenter instance, or I just have this because I want to make sure if vCenter ever dies, it's an easy way for me to get my distributed virtual switch back up. I can actually right click on this, go back to all vCenter actions, and actually I can restore a configuration from the backup file. So it's an easy way to do automatic rollback, or sorry, it's an easy way to do um, fail back and recovery and everything like that. Now there are some more enhanced within the distributed virtual switch. Um, we'll talk about LACP, SROV, BPD filters, port mirroring, and NetFlow enhancements. I'll kind of show you the NetFlow enhancements right now. There's really not a whole lot of them as you can see right there. Uh, port mirroring, if I go ahead and click new, I can see that we now have R-SPAN and ER-SPAN capabilities for the port mirroring functions. So LACP is typically a, it's a standard within a lot of networking infrastructures, and really it gets a, it's, a, it's a standard way to do aggregation of multiple physical links together to form a, a single logical link. So if you had four 1 gig NICs, you can team them together to have, um, uh, basically it's viewed as a single uplink or a single adapter. It's not to say that it increases a lot of bandwidth, but it increases more for redundancy purposes. And now within 5.1, uh, 
we it's it's actually now supported as a as a standard when you want to link it back into your physical switches. The other is we now have SIROV or single root I/O virtualization. This is something that is typically what we've been used to with VM Direct Path. VM Direct Path is where we would actually have another PCI Express adapter or something like that within the host, and would have to be dedicated to a virtual ma machine. So think about if you needed a virtual machine that had very, very heavy network intensive I.O. operations and you had to dedicate an entire NIC card to that virtual machine. It reduces CPU overhead because it doesn't have to go through the hypervisor and it just goes and you actually present that NIC card directly to the VM. But single root I.O. virtualization actually allows you to take a network adapter or something like that and be able to present it to multiple virtual machines through those virtual functions now that are exposed in the virtual machine. So, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship anymore, but it's now a one-to-many. The next is a, a BIPTU filter feature. Now, it's not to say that it's actually supported because by default, a distributed virtual switch and a vSphere standard switch don't take place in spanning tree. So what that's being said is that the BIPTU is a, a, a bridge packet data unit, and that's what's actually used to exchange packets between physical switches as as really as part of spanning tree. But since the distributed switches and the virtual switches don't participate in it, there's this new thing called the filtering process. And what this does is that if you have virtual machines that actually spit out bit to use, um, it's going to be able to allow it to be able to filter through and go out without actually having to worry about DOS attacks. So you don't have to worry about uh, a virtual switch blocking these kind of frames or uh, physical switch ports actually being blocked because of something that a virtual machine is sending out. So this is actually, it can be enabled and changed within the advanced settings of the host as well. So I'd kind of shown you a little bit about the port mirroring uh, in, the, in the NetFlow enhancements. Really, uh, NetFlow, the new enhancement is called IPFix, right? So NetFlow version 5 is not supported on the, v, on the, v, on the VDS, um, but NetFlow version 10 is really the more advanced and flexible protocol that really can allow you to define more things and now you can report on IPv6, MPLS, and VXLAN workflows. And with the port mirroring uh, capabilities, as I kind of said, we now it's now supporting uh, ER span uh, and R span with inside the distributed virtual switch and also support for encapsulated remote, remote port mirroring via a GRE tunnel. And the last thing we're going to look at is this new thing with inside the, really when you configure a host and you configure a VM kernel port. So if I go to my host over here, I click on here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the Manage tab of my virtual adapters. And I have this one basically running for everything. And I'm going to go ahead, I am going to edit it. And you see... We, we were used to seeing vMotion traffic. We were used to seeing fault tolerant logging. We saw management traffic, but there's this new thing called vSphere replication traffic. Now, this is actually something that's very new within vSphere 5.1 is you can actually do um, replication of a virtual machine without using SRM or without using anything uh, that would be like SAN array mirroring technology. Now, I can't really show you how to do this in here today because it's an actual... That's another VF that has to be deployed and a plugin that has to be put into the um, to to vCenter to be able to use it all. But basically, what it allows you to do is it allows you to do a transfer or, or replicate a virtual machine from uh, one vCenter instance to another vCenter instance, or to another host, or to another data store. Um, really, it allows you to go to anywhere uh, without the need to have the underlying storage array replication going. So that's another thing that you're going to be seeing a lot of here uh, in week during VMworld. So those are all the new features and functionalities that I'm going to be showing within inside the vSphere web client for everything vSphere 5.1. I hope you enjoyed these web video series and I thank you again for watching.